Welcome to another Keyshot Quick Tip. This video will demonstrate how to use the depth pass in order to achieve realistic depth of field in Photoshop instead of rendering it in Keyshot. The benefit of this is it allows you to apply depth of field after a rendering is done instead of having to select it once and render it out in Keyshot. In this scene, I've got a vehicle on a ground plane. If I zoom out and select the ground plane, you'll see that this will be a large ground plane with the texture applied, which will help fade out into the scene. So under my cameras, I've already saved the camera that I'll be using for this image here. If you're gonna render with the depth pass, you can go to our render tab here. Just make sure that you have depth pass applied. In this case, I'm just gonna render as a PNG with no transparency and just set it to render for two minutes. I'll go ahead and hit render. Okay, now that our rendering is done, I'll go ahead and hit close and then pause my real-time render. Now I can navigate over to my finder where I'll see that the render is complete and I have two files. One is our final render image here saved as a flattened PNG. The other is the depth pass, which comes out as an EXR. So what I'll do is I'll drag these into Photoshop. There, just hit OK. And now you can see I've got these two images. What we want to do in order to get a usable image for our EXR here is to actually make a quick adjustment to it. Under the adjustments, drop down, we can change the exposure on this. What a depth pass does is it uses the color information to define how far and close something is from the camera. In this case, white is going to be farthest away, black is going to be closest to the camera. So I'll move the exposure down to get it close, but what I can also do is I can set my white point and my black point using these eyedropper tools here. So I'll select the white eyedropper and click on an area that's far away from the camera, then select my black eyedrop tool, and then now this point here is gonna be closest to the camera. That's why it's helpful to sometimes add a ground plane because it gives us a piece of geometry to reference that's seen in the entire image. I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now we have this gradient image here which represents distance from the camera. What I can do now is I'll select all copy, and then toggle back over to my final rendered image. What I'd like to do is actually apply that image as a channel. So under my channels tab, I'm going to create a new channel, and then I'm going to paste our depth pass. So paste in place, and then I'll go ahead and deselect. And now you see I have this alpha one available as a channel. If I toggle back to RGB, that's a regular image, this is our alpha. So I'll go back, select my layer. Now what I can do is go under the filter menu and then under blur, I can select lens blur. As you can see here, we can select a depth mat as our source. Right now by default, it doesn't have one selected. But what I can do here is just use that alpha one and use that as a depth mat. Now, this is similar to selecting our focus point in Keyshot. Wherever you click, it's going to use that as a focal point and anything else that's farther or closer away is gonna be slightly out of focus. We can see the results a little bit more as well if we increase the radius. So now when I click here, the very front of this car, that front tire, you can see the rest of that image getting blurred out. Now I'll hit okay and it'll calculate a final image. I'll zoom in so this is a little bit more visible. Now you can see that this part of the image is in focus and then this part is out of focus. What's convenient about that is that we only have to do one rendering inside of Keyshot and we can apply the depth of field after the fact in Photoshop. So this is helpful for having to actually change the depth of field after the rendering is done. So as you've seen, Keyshot provides another easy way to streamline your workflow and get fast, accurate results.